Church, if you have your Bible, I want to invite you to turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2. Matthew, chapter 2. We're going to read verses 1 through 12, the account of the visit of the Magi to see Jesus. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they had saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word in the minds and hearts of his people every time we hear it. Please join me in prayer. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere, fill our hearts, fill our souls Fill our minds. Speak to us. Holy Spirit, if you don't move and speak in this place, we're just going through some religious stuff, and it won't transform our lives. We need you. We welcome you. Come speak to us. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Every week we place in the worship folder a sheet that has the outline of the message and a place to fill in blanks and take notes. I invite you to take it out and follow along. The words that go in the blanks on the sheet will be on the screens throughout the message. Well, two Catholic boys were born on the same day, one in Ireland and the other in Italy. Timothy Murphy was born in Ireland. Anthony Sicola was born in Italy. They both grew up and went to Catholic school. They both went to college and heard a call to ministry while they were in college. They both responded and took vows of priesthood and became priests in the Catholic Church. And even though they were in Ireland and Italy, their their careers mirrored one another. They, They were wonderful, strong parish priests, and then they both became bishops, and then they both became archbishops, and finally they both became cardinals. The whole Catholic world believed that when the Pope died, one of these two men, either Timothy Timothy Murphy or Anthony Sicola, would become the new Pope. And almost everybody thought it was going to be Anthony because he just stood out head and shoulders above all the other leaders in the church. Well, the Pope died. The cardinals went into enclave. The smoke came out of the chimney. And standing on the balcony to, to greet the world as the new Pope was Father Timothy Murphy. Everybody was surprised. Tony Anthony Sicola was particularly surprised, and he asked if he could have an audience with the other cardinals. They met, and he asked them, why did you choose Father Murphy over me? And the oldest cardinal there said, Antonio, we knew that you were the best candidate, but we sim- simply couldn't take the thought that the Catholic Church for the next decades would be led by Pope Sicola. (laughs) That may be the worst groaner of 2019, right out of the gate on the first Sunday. 
The Pope may be a very important person in the world, but before there even was a Pope, some very important people came to meet Jesus. They're magi. Today is Epiphany Day. January 6th is Epiphany Day, and Epiphany is the day when we celebrate the visit of the Magi to see Jesus. It's 12 days after Christmas. That's why we have the song on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. The 12 days of Christmas are the 12 days between Christmas Day and the day the Magi came. And the Epiphany, the word Epiphany means appearance or manifestation. Appearance or or manifestation. We celebrate today the appearance of the Magi to worship Jesus. We celebrate today the manifestation of the Christmas star, the star of Bethlehem, that led them to Israel, that led them to Jerusalem, that led them to the very house where Jesus was born. It was an epiphany. It was a manifestation from God, that Christmas star that shone light to guide the Magi to where Jesus was. This all comes out of God's great covenant with Abraham. God's great covenant with Abraham was not only with Abraham. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3 says this, The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And here it is, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. From the very foundation, the very beginning, the very first promise of God to Abram, it was not only, Abram, I'm going to raise up a nation, I'm going to bless that nation, but all nations will be blessed through you. God's purpose from the beginning was that his plan of redemption would be for everyone, not just for the Jews. God made himself a nation, a people. They were blessed to be a blessing, to bless all the nations, to bless the Gentiles. What's a Gentile? A Gentile is anyone who's not a Jew. You're either a Jew or a Gentile. If you're Jewish, you're Jewish. If you're not, you're Gentile. I are one. So are you. Anybody that's not Jewish is Gentile. This blessing was for all nations, Gentile nations as well as the Jewish nation. The covenant was with Abraham, but it was for us all. The covenant was with Abraham, but it was for us all. Jesus was born as a Jew, but he was born for all people. The appearance of the Magi indicates that this one who's born king of the Jews is also born king of the Magi, king of their nation, king of all nations. Praise the Lord for that. Amen? Yeah, amen. So Magi came from the east seeking Jesus. The, 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 some details about, um, about the, first of all, the Magi were not kings. There's no place in the scripture that says the Magi were kings. The office of Magi in the ancient world was not the office of the king. It was the office of the wise man, the ruler, the, the, the learned one. Not the king, but the king's advisors. And sometimes magicians. And sometimes astrology, astrology was part of the office of Magi. So um, they, they, they were not kings. They were holy men. And they were from the east. East of Israel was Persia. They came from Persia, 99% likelihood, because they came from the east. What was Persia? Persia is modern-day Iraq. Persia is uh, the empire that displaced the Medes, that displaced the Babylonians, that took Israel into exile centuries earlier. How did these wise ones, these learned men from Persia, know to look for a star that would indicate the birth of the king of the Jews? It was Daniel. In Daniel 2, verse 48, Daniel has interpreted a dream for King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. No one else could interpret the dream. As a matter of fact, Daniel told the king his dream and then interpreted it. 
And the king is so impressed at this supernatural revelation that Daniel had that he does this. Genesis chapter 2, verse 48. Then the king placed Daniel in a high position and lavished many gifts on him. He made him ruler over the entire province of Babylon. Here it is. And placed him in charge of all its magi, all its wise men. Daniel taught the Magi of Babylon and, it, and was there even for the change to the Medes and the Persians. Daniel taught the Magi of the Persians to watch for one to be born in Israel who will be the blessing of the whole nation, of, of all the nations of the earth. And so it was passed down from generation to generation in Persia among the Magi to watch, to watch for the star, to watch for one born king of the Jews. It was Daniel. Some other details of the visit. First of all, we find out in Matthew 2 verse 11 that the Magi did not show up at the manger. Verse 11 says this, on coming to the house, they saw the child and his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Coming to the house, not the manger, the house. This is one of the main reasons why um, tradition has it, and we believe that the wise men came a few days later, not on the night Jesus was born. So the truth is, in all of our manger scenes, in all of our Christmas programs, when we, when we do the living manger scene, we have the shepherd show up, and then we have the, the magi show up, and they didn't show up on the same night. They weren't there together. They just weren't. Tradition has it that uh, the magi showed up 12 days later, when Joseph and Mary had found space in a house, probably with relatives, and uh, visited Jesus on the 12th day, the, the, the end of Christmas and the beginning of Epiphany, the 12th day. Uh, the Bible actually does not say there were three kings or three magi. It just says magi came from the east. We think three because there were three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So we say three gifts, three magi. Could have been ten magi who gave three kinds of gifts, some of them giving gold, some of them frankincense, some of them myrrh. Could have been two magi, one of them brought two gifts. The Bible doesn't tell us how many, but we associate three because we three kings of Orient are. We do a lot of things about Christmas because of the songs that the Bible doesn't actually indicate. The Bible does not say that they came on camels. The Bible makes no mention of how they arrived or how they were transported. They, they, could, they could have walked. They could have ridden camels. They could have ridden horses. They could have ridden mules. We don't know. But again, kind of tradition is they came from the east. They probably crossed the desert. They likely rode camels. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having the three magi in your manger scene at home right alongside the three shepherds, the shepherds, the two shepherds, or however many you have in your nativity set. It, it, that doesn't matter. But just know that several of those things that we kind of assume about Christmas and about the visit of the magi are extra-biblical traditions. doesn't make them necessarily bad, but we cannot confirm that they're true. What we know is Magi came from the east, asked Herod, went to Bethlehem, found Jesus, and gave him gifts. What does it matter? What does it matter that Magi came seeking Jesus? The Magi represent the legacy of Daniel's faithfulness. Daniel taught God's truth to the Magi, the, the learned ones of of Babylon and Media and Persia. He taught them in exile. He taught them where God had planted him. And this is his legacy. That decades, centuries later, that was being passed down through them so that the Magi of Jesus' day were watching for him. Daniel witnessed where he was put. We need to do the same thing. We need to be the ones who tell the truth, the ones who share about Jesus, the ones who show Jesus to people in our own families, in our own neighborhoods, in our own workplace, in our own school, right here in our town, in our county. 
We need to be the magi who show Jesus to people, who tell them the truth. I believe it's important that the Magi came seeking Jesus because the Magi represent seekers. And seekers come in all kinds of configurations, in all kinds of appearances, in all kinds of flavors, including you and me. And seekers often have messy lives. What? These Magi were pagan. These Magi were probably astrologers. They... They read horoscopes and did stuff like that. They weren't Christians and they weren't even faithful Jews. No, they weren't. But they were seeking. And seekers sometimes have messy lives. Here's the truth. A messy life does not disqualify anyone from seeking and finding Jesus. Never has, never will. Jesus will always welcome one who seeks him. God will always welcome one who seeks him. Always, every time. Messy lives don't disqualify us. God guided pagan astronomers to his son, and God is drawing all of us to his son as well. Muslims, illegal aliens, pierced and tattooed young people, welfare deadbeats, blacks, Mexicans, Asians, no matter what the configuration of a life, seeking Jesus brings one to Jesus. The love of Jesus in us is as sure a sign as the Christmas star was to the Magi. I want to say that again. The love of Jesus in us is as sure a sign to seekers today as the Christmas star that guided the Magi. When we love, when we serve, when we encourage, when we pray, when we give, when we help, when we speak of our faith, when we bless other people, God uses it as light to guide people on the path toward Jesus. Christ is for everyone. Christ is for both Jew and Gentile. Both Jew and Gentile. I said that earlier, say it again. The gospel is for all of humanity. Jesus did not just die for the Jews. Jesus did not just die for the Jews and Christians. Jesus died for the world, for everyone in it, and anyone in it who seeks him and puts faith in him will receive the benefit of that life that was laid down on the cross, forgiveness and eternal life. Wise men still seek him, and they still find him. He is King of kings, Lord of lords, and Savior of all of humanity. The Magi represent a seeking heart. The Magi represent a seeking heart. Why seek Jesus? What's the benefit? Why seek Christ? The benefit is a new start. The benefit is is forgiveness. The benefit is taking care of all the past and giving a clean slate. I want you to watch this video about a clean slate. If only I could go back and change some things, set things straight. I wish I had a do-over. I've made choices. I've lost out. I've wished a thousand times I could go back and try again. It's hard not to imagine what might have been. If I had just stopped to think. If I had just done as I was told. If I hadn't thought I knew it all. Why didn't I just take a few deep breaths? Took one second to listen. Maybe my life would be better. Maybe there wouldn't be such a high price to pay. Things would be different now. I wouldn't have so many regrets. But is everything lost? Can I just get a do-over? Is there a way back to new beginnings? Because regret can mean a new beginning. When it's given to the one who produces a repentance. A repentance that delivers me from my grief. The one who takes my mistakes. And somehow, 
redeems me through them. Who tells me I am not the sum total of all my regrets? He tells me not to look back. Because there's nothing there to see. I am not my mistakes. He is faithful and just to forgive me. I just have to ask him. And then I can look straight for it. Forget what is behind me. And strain towards what is ahead. And walk away with all regrets erased by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Every day I'm given a clean slate. A clean slate? I get a clean slate. Regret, sorrow, shame, you don't have to live with them. Jesus gives a clean slate. In a moment, we're going to come to communion. You bring all the past, the brokenness, the mistakes, the, the things you regret, the things you've done, you wish you never had. You bring it and lay it on the communion rail at the feet of Jesus, and you believe in him, and he will forgive and he will give new life, a fresh start, a clean slate, a new beginning. That's what he wants to do for each one of us. Will you pray with me? Father, some of us have come to church today with great regret over things we've done in the past. Some of us know that we have sinned greatly against you and against others and we can't fix it we can't change it our hearts are broken we're filled with sorrow and regret and you do not want us to live there you do not want us to live our lives in regret and sorrow you want to give us a new start you want to give us a clean slate you want to give us new life and so we pray as we come to communion that you will fill us full, that you will forgive our past, that you will cleanse us of our sin, wipe it away so that it's not there anymore because you've cleansed us from, of it and help us, Lord, live a new life. Help us be the light of Jesus to a dark world. Help us manifest Jesus to the world the way the Christmas star made him manifest to the Magi because that's what you desire for us. As we come to communion, Lord, change us. We pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Friends, we are called to manifest Jesus to the world, to any who do not know him. We make him real by love and sacrifice and service and caring and encouragement and prayer and helping. May God help us see our mission field with the eyes of his love. And may God make us like Christmas stars. So the light of the world is shown to seekers who want to know God.